Right, it's been two and a half years since this one launched, and this is a special CPU, one of AMD's most popular SKUs, and a lot has happened since then. So let's push this guy to the wall and see how it still stacks up. Welcome to Machines and More. I had done my homework and testing on this overclocked 3600, yeah. Recently, the 5600X, you can find it now for 260 bucks at quite a few major retailers. So no, I'll lay this up front. As good as this CPU is, don't go out there and try to buy one, even at the price it was before, like what, 180, 185 bucks. Definitely the 5600X is a much better buy now. And actually, if you stay tuned, I have this bugger, the 12400 coming up for review. So I'm testing it a little bit longer for the um, for the longer term feedback. And that being said, I think many of you that are already running this chip can benefit from this type of content. So I'll just make a quick, share some of the testing results here. Um, and this one is the Ryzen 5 3600. It's a later one. And at least uh, from my experience, the later ones have been pretty overclockable. I've been on Ryzen since Zen Plus, or I guess Ryzen 2000, but uh, I think this generation was special. I think many would agree. This is a CPU that AMD was like, hey, for real now, move over Intel, and we're cheap too. <laughs> and yeah, it's funny, because you kind of see that reversal of roles as we get into the thick and heavy, the CPU price wars. But before the recent price drop at $300 uh, for the 5600X, perhaps that, that were, there was still that question, is there any point in getting the 3600? Of course, at the current price, there's really no more question, but uh, you might have a special 3600 already. And the one I have here, it's it's not too shabby. I am able to get it to 4.5 gigahertz all core on 1.275 volts, which is right at the top of where I'm comfortable running Zen 2 regularly for an all core OC. At stock PBO boost, this one will get up to 4.5, 4.1 gigahertz on all cores. So there is quite a bit of gain there from uh, doing that type of all core overclock. And uh, 4.5 gigahertz, that's right around where the 5600X will boost you on PPO. Although just the clock speed doesn't tell the whole story because there's a big instructions per cycle or IPC increase from Zen 2 to 3. Now, typically you don't want to overclock this way unless you can exceed the usual PPO single core boost clocks. And uh, for Ryzen 5000, it really doesn't make too much sense to do that anymore. But yeah, 4.5 gigahertz, it's well above the single core boosts that uh, the 3600 usually hits on auto, which is about, uh, you know, at most like 4.2 on a single core. Cooling wise, you don't need anything exotic. And I, I still don't think there's a compelling reason to put even the 5600X on liquid, even though I've done so, um, but that doesn't mean it makes financial sense. But the Mugen 5 we just revisited with the Wonder Snail upgrade is quite on point for Ryzen 5. And so if we look at the gains from the OC here, yeah, it's, it's still closer to the bottom of the CPUs you might compare to, but those are more expensive ones too, right? But if you haven't pushed your chip all the way, even for multi-core performance in Cinebench, it's actually not too far behind. Again, I, I think this one is a pretty good sample, but here it is catching Comet Lake in single core. You can push that 5600X more with a more aggressive curve optimizer profile, but yeah, this benchmark is right out of the box and that's not too bad. Four times by CPU or higher core count chips are gonna leave the way, so this is gonna be a tough one for it to break through. For a blender, the OC gets it right in the ballpark at the 11600K, and yeah, it's a pretty sizable gain there. For encoding a video with CPU-based rendering, I was very impressed since the OC chip is only 15 seconds behind the 5600X. So quick check on gaming for 1080p Ultra in Red Dead 2, paired with 3080. Remarkably, it's within run-to-run -run variants of the average FPS of the Zen 3 chips. There's worse frame time consistency here, but I was surprised. And in 1440p, where you'd normally expect things to be a little bit more GPU bound, especially with this title, the OC really gives a chip a mean kick here, again, within run to run variants. Of course, the 12600K is giving all the others a little bit of a beat down here. So yeah, is this one still relevant? Well, yeah, other than the fact that don't go out and buy one, yeah, it's still totally relevant. If you, especially if you have good silicon like this already, I definitely consider pushing it and running it this way until Zen 4 rolls around. And even if your chip isn't as golden, hey, maybe you're GPU limited still, or you don't play at uh, lower resolutions, you play at higher resolutions where you're more GPU limited. At that point, if you don't need the multi-core processing power of the 5600X, 
and it's still quite a small differential there. Uh, I would absolutely stick it out with this chip and see what happens later this year. I mean, at that point, you're holding all the cards, right? 7600X, whatever it'll be called, plus a new board. It sounds like you won't need a new cooler either since the mount pattern will be the same. Or if you need a simpler refresh, the AM4 board that you have can still take an in-socket upgrade to maybe a 5800X or 5900X when the prices come down even more. So yeah, you'll have plenty of options then. But um, otherwise, if you're building a new system up now from scratch, 5600X for 260 bucks is an absolute screaming deal. So if you're building now, grab that, uh, pair that with a cheap B550 board, and yeah, that's a serious, serious build that will definitely be relevant for a few years. But hey, yeah, it doesn't mean we can't still have a little fun with this guy. So hope you found this entertaining and helpful. Subscribe if you haven't already, give a like. Thanks for watching.